welcome back. In today's video, we're going to talk about NetFlow, or as the more recent versions are known, IPFix. NetFlow is a very powerful tool for measuring large volumes of network traffic. Let's get started. We've talked in the past about performing packet captures and performing per packet analyses. However, there are clear scalability limits to what can be done if the requirement is to capture every packet in the network. NetFlow takes things up a level. Instead of tracking every individual packet, instead it keeps track of flows, or conversations. These flows are defined as representing a set of packets or frames that have some common properties. Usually, these share a source and destination IP address, a source and destination layer 4 port number, and potentially other fields as well. So in the output of this collection, rather than having a record for every single packet, there is a single record for a flow, and then some counters that allow for further analysis of the flows. So in the network, there will be a flow observer, which in practice is a router interface that's collecting these per flow statistics about the traffic that's passing through that interface. The observer will have some criteria based on which it will identify new flows and also expire old ones that are no longer observing traffic. For each of the flows, it will collect things like the source and destination IP address, the IP protocol field value, which tells you whether this is TCP or UDP or ICMP or so on, the source and destination port numbers. Note this is fairly TCP and UDP centric, but the majority of network traffic is TCP traffic. The observer will also keep counters for the flow in terms of packets and bytes, as well as the time that the flow started and the time that it ended. The flow will also be annotated with the interface that it was observed on and the direction. Depending on what version of the NetFlow protocol we're talking about, flows may only be unidirectional or bidirectional flows may also be supported. So with the earlier versions that only supported unidirectional flows, a conversation like a TCP connection that generates data packets in one direction and acknowledgments in the other would cause the observer to track two flows, one in each direction. Looking at the evolution over time, we had the earliest versions of NetFlow being introduced in Cisco routers in the mid 1990s, I think 1996, and only IPv4 was considered at that time. And the messages for NetFlow were sent over UDP. By about version five in the early to mid 2000s, NetFlow became fairly widely deployed and it was supported by other router vendors in addition to Cisco. At this time, however, it still only supported IPv4. By NetFlow version 9 in the late 2000s, IPv6 support was added and more flexibility in terms of what flow metadata was recorded. It also supported transporting the flow messages over TCP or SCTP in order to benefit from the reliability of those transport protocols. IPFix was based on NetFlow version 9, and in principle it serves the same purpose. However, it is not backwards compatible with NetFlow, and it is more general in that it supports things like bidirectional flows. Whether we're setting up our own NetFlow collection or just working with the data, we should be aware of the architecture of the system. So we start with an observation point, which is a router interface through which the traffic is passing. And we can have a set of these observation points, which is called an observation domain. On the router that is observing traffic, a NetFlow exporter will run, and that's a service that periodically sends the flow data back to a central collection point. And this collection point is known as the NetFlow collector. So that's a server that is receiving this NetFlow data and putting it into a database or somewhere else that it can be stored and analyzed later. Or it may even run some real-time analysis services. The other component of this is the export packet or message. So NetFlow defines both the record format and a message format, which can carry many NetFlow records in one packet back to the collector. The earlier versions of NetFlow all used UDP, which makes sense when you consider that a major consideration here is scalability. So the NetFlow exporter didn't want to have to waste time setting up connections and using up resources to send a message to the collector. So just send UDP packets as soon as it had records to send. The downside to this was that these UDP packets could be lost because there's no reliability in the protocol. So some number of the records could be lost between the reporter and the collector. Later on, NetFlow added sequence numbers so that while the records could not be recovered, at least it would know if records had been lost. Another important and commonly used feature of NetFlow is sampling. So we note that NetFlow itself is a means of aggregating traffic measurements. So we're giving up some detail by not tracking every single packet in exchange for being able to manage in a scalable fashion the analysis of all the traffic passing through a particular router or network. So we scale down from measuring every single packet to trying to measure each conversation. However, on backbone links, there is still likely to be too high of a packet rate for NetFlow to process every single packet and record the associated metrics. And this is where NetFlow sampling comes in. So part of the configuration of the NetFlow observer is the sampling rate. For example, one in a thousand packets may be sampled. So for every thousand packets that go through the interface, 
only one will actually be counted in a NetFlow record. And the idea is to get a representative sampling of the traffic that's passing through the network while still having a scalable number of records to manage. So that wraps up our brief overview of NetFlow. Next, we'll look at some ways in which we can optimize this sort of flow-based traffic analysis. See you then. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it to be useful, please click the like button. To be notified when more videos are posted for this class, please subscribe to our channel and click the bell. Thank you.